thank you so much for for joining us this evening. Um, you, uh, I hope, are in very good hands this evening with uh, with two excellent organizations who have uh, some very excellent and very free resources to share with all of you. So uh, I'm David Olson uh, from Retro Reports. Um, I'm the director of education here at Retro Reports. Uh, we'll be sharing all sorts of great resources uh, along with uh, a little bit about you know what we do, what our process is for creating films, and then resources that go with them. I'm joined this evening uh, by a number of other people, but my my co-host uh, is Casey Finch from CFR Education. Casey, tell the nice people about yourself. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, good evening. I'm Casey Finch, the Deputy Director of Teaching and Learning at CFR Education. Um, I'm I'm a fairly you kind of just crossed the one year mark. I spent 15 years in the classroom teaching social studies at middle school and high school and past year has been spent in CFR education, creating some lesson plans, um, some professional development and other resources that we'll be showing you today. So very excited to be partnered with Retro Report for tonight's session. Yes, this, uh, you know, probably won't be the only time you hear it, but there's a, a little bit of a mutual admiration society, uh, I'm a big fan of, of what CFR education does and uh, the Council on Foreign Relations in general. Um, and so you might see that here and there uh, in some of the resources that we share. Um, so our plan for this evening is uh, we're going to talk about uh, some wonderful resources to look at issues of foreign policy, um, things, you know, all the way sort of on the spectrum from covert action and espionage to the very overt actions of diplomacy. Um, we're also going to talk about uh, how to integrate a number of, of different types of media into your classroom uh, to teach about these things. So uh, we've got some, some great and brand new videos to share with you. Uh, we have lessons, we have simulations. Uh, CFR Education even has a fantastic game uh, to to share with you if you're if you're not familiar with it yet it's definitely one you should add to your list to not only for you to play but to play in your classroom so with that being said we'll we'll give you a brief introduction and then we'll we'll dive into the resources I know I I do see a, a ton of wonderful familiar faces in the crowd but if you are unfamiliar with Retro Report which I'm guessing are are at least a, a good chunk of you. We are a, a nonprofit, nonpartisan journalism organization. Um, our goal uh, is to connect past and present, to find great stories from history um, and connect them to the world that we're living in today, um, along with uh, you know, looking at things that are happening in current events and then looking backwards in time to figure out what do we need to know to understand the moment we're living in and give it context? So what we do at Retro Report is create short form documentary films. Um, and you'll see clips of a couple of them tonight. Um, I think, you know, I'm a big fan of our style of storytelling, which really focuses on finding great archival footage and coupling it with uh, first person interviews to hear from those people who, who lived the history themselves. Um, and we uh, we cater to a whole bunch of different types of classes, uh, pretty much the, the social study spectrum of courses, along with some great resources for English and ELA classrooms uh, and science classrooms as well. So one of the things I'll show you tonight, we have a, a wonderful science lesson and a civics and government lesson uh, ready to go. Um, so at Retro Report, we have a, a library of over 275 short films all of which are entirely free. Um, and then a ton of those, well over 100, uh, have a lesson plan, student activity, interactive resources, uh, things to be able to, to plug directly into your classroom to, to put those films to use. Um, so we're gonna show, preview two films tonight, uh, each with a, an international relations focus. Um, one looks at uh, looks back in history to 1953 um, and the uh, the U.S. backed coup in Iran, um, and another that looks at uh, the ozone layer and how environmental uh, cooperation across countries uh, throughout the world was able to uh, actually make a make a big impact in solving an environmental problem. So really excited to share those with you. And then uh, Casey, tell us about CFR education. Yeah, so um, for those of you unfamiliar, I'll give a brief rundown. Um, first off, we are uh, part of the Council on Foreign Relations, which is a 100-year-old 
foreign policy think tank, um, independent, non-governmental and nonpartisan. Um, CFR Education hopes to kind of leverage that expertise um, and knowledge and help students better understand uh, global civics and the foreign policy choices facing the United States. Um, in terms of CFR education specifically, today I'm going to give a brief teaser of three of our free online nonpartisan resources. We have World 101, um, which covers a lot of different topics. It's kind of like an online textbook to some extent with short form videos, um, some, some useful charts and graphics that help students understand the world around them. We have model diplomacy, which is um, uh, it focuses on creating simulations around hypothetical scenarios that could um, occur in the real world, which I'll talk about um, a little bit later today. And last but not least, we have Convene the Council, which is a foreign policy game, a free online game that we created with iCivics, um, where students can assume the role of uh, a position on the National Security Council where they receive advice and they work their way through um, the, the challenges and benefits of making those decisions. So um, ultimately, we hope to support teachers with lesson plans, uh, essay questions, professional development, and we have a couple teachers on staff, so we're trying to leverage that expertise. So um, hopefully you'll get a chance to, to dive into these a little bit more after tonight's session, but I'll, I'll walk you through a little bit. So that's us in a nutshell. Yeah, that's that's excellent. And and hopefully uh, teachers in the audience uh, know and can tell when they're getting resources from organizations that are are led by educators or in some cases, former educators, but but people who have that actual classroom experience. Um, I, I like to hope that it makes a difference in in the way that uh, organizations like Retro Report and CFR Education can serve you. So. Uh, the first film we're going to take a look at tonight, we'll just watch a, a short chunk. Uh, this is one we released uh, late last week. Um, it tells uh, one of my favorite stories from history, uh, not necessarily because of the outcome or those sorts of things, but uh, just this incredible tale of intrigue uh, and, uh, and the CIA at work. So we're going to watch a, a short little clip from the secret CIA operation that haunts U.S.-Iran relations. Iran is one of the oldest countries in the world, and it has one of the deepest and most magnificent civilizations. So when I first got to Iran, I started asking people with all this tremendous culture and history that you have, why is it that Iran was never able to develop a democracy? Finally, I had a gentleman say, well, you know, actually, we did have democracy here once, but you took it away from us. Beneath these mountains lie fabulous oil fields that supply four continents. More than 10% of the whole world's known reserve. At the dawn of the 20th century, the first major oil field in the Middle East was found near Abadan, an island at the southwest tip of Iran. But the discovery had not been made by Iranians themselves. The British ran and ruled Abadan. The Anglo-Iranian Oil Company, in which the British government owns a controlling interest, they set up a near colony without using the word colony. Britain's control of Iranian oil fueled its position as a world power, while many Iranian refinery workers lived in slums. By 1951, Iranians began to rally behind an upstart prime minister to demand their full share. Premier Mohammad Mossadegh arrives in New York to plead his nation's case. Mossadegh was a fascinating figure. He had had a political career as a young man, but because he refused to go along with the dictatorship, he was essentially exiled. And as prime minister, he railed against this gross fact of Iranian life, that Iran was immensely rich in one natural resource, but Iranians didn't get to profit off this resource. Mossadegh, whose single purpose is oil nationalization. Everyone wanted that oil-rich piece of land. My father was the dean of the Abaddon Institute of Technology. Dr. Mossadegh called him and said, listen, you're going to run the refinery. The Iranian flag is hoisted over the world's largest oil refinery, signifying its seizure by the government. Signs over British offices are torn down. 
the last plane loads of wives and children of British workers are hurried away. The moment the British left, they destroyed all the details of the refinery. My father and his band of engineers had to start from scratch. Almost immediately, Britain started a major boycott of Iranian oil. Everyday Iranians really felt the pressure. The American government was very concerned about what will happen if the strength of the country crumbles. This is the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States government, a depot for subversion and a kind of clandestine university. The U.S. was right at the point of the Cold War where it was looking around the world and trying to figure out how to stop communism from spreading. One of the ways they decided was to get into countries they felt were particularly vulnerable. I teach constitutional law, and we're in the courtroom where we train our law students to present cases and to respond to the other side's case, because in some ways I feel like history has put my grandfather on trial. Kermit Roosevelt, the CIA man who plotted the overthrow of Iran's prime minister. All right, that's all you get. That's the, that's the tease. Uh, so here, Iran start again. So I... That's a, about a three minute chunk uh, of that film, uh, which, frankly, uh, compared to most retro reports, it runs a little long. It's 14 minutes, um, which hopefully you can still uh, find find a way to, to use that in your classroom. Um, again, uh, it goes from there to talk about uh, how the CIA uh, was involved uh, with the coup um, and and really the aftermath, uh, the uh, bringing back of the Shah of Iran, uh, the Shah's uh, mostly brutal uh, reign, uh, and then uh, another revolution in, in 1979. Um, and so what we focused on here was uh, creating some resources that could be used in a couple different places in classrooms. So um, I'll show you a little preview here of, of two different full lessons and student activities that go with this. Um, for one of them, uh, I was a longtime uh, U.S. government and politics AP teacher, um, loved teaching that course. Um, and and I, I know there's a lot of crossover between AP Gov and AP Comp Gov teachers. And so when it got to the time to uh, create resources for this, um, I knew because this was focused on Iran, that this would be a great place for us to, to begin creating some comparative government resources. Um, I will say this first lesson I'll show you is also a great fit uh, with world history classes as well. And then there's a separate sort of U.S. history focus that sort of puts this in the context of the Cold War, uh, looks at other you know CIA operations and ways that the U.S. Uh, tried to exert some of that pressure. Um, we also had a, a veteran CompGov teacher create two brand new FRQs that you can use that I'll show you here in a moment. Um, and really our, our sort of essential questions looking at these are how and why does uh, regime change occur? And then what foreign policy tools does the United States have or what does it use to try to influence other countries? So here I'll take you on a quick uh, whip around through some of the resources. And again, we're sharing them in the chat. I will also share them uh, in an email to follow up uh, this webinar as well. So here, this is where you can find uh, the Retro Report Education Library uh, with all of our uh, videos that have uh, classroom resources to go with them. One of the things you'll find up at the top here is we actually have a line to five different uh, AP courses where we've We've looked at what resources of ours fit within those frameworks. Uh, this is our first one that fits with CompGov. So maybe a little further down the road, we'll uh, we'll create some addition. We'll create an additional CompGov collection too. Uh, but as you scroll down, you'll find uh, the different uh, different videos that then have lessons and activities to go with them. This page takes us to the the video page where you can find uh, the the lesson and activities that are here. This is the first lesson, the regime change lesson. Uh, this is the one that's aligned with uh, with CompGov. Um, just a, a note about nomenclature. Um, when we talk about lesson plans, those are the teacher-facing documents. So uh, what are my essential questions? What materials do I need? What will students actually do? Um, those sorts of things. How long will it take? Um, and so here you can, you can scroll through and see on that one. And then the activity... Uh, this is the student-facing document. So 
Um, the other important thing to know is we create all of these in Google Docs um, because we want it to be as easy as possible for you to be able to use them in your classroom. So believe me, as a, as a former classroom teacher, spent way too many hours finding an almost perfect lesson only to realize it was in a PDF and then go, great, I guess the next hour of my life is going to be recreating the 80% awesome lesson to work in my classroom. So what I would love you to do is if this is something that works or almost works in your classroom, just go click on file, make a copy, and then feel free to make whatever changes uh, will make it work in your classroom. Um, so here there's a, a brief timeline of Iran to sort of pinpoint when have those regimes changed over uh, over time. Uh, and then here has students go through uh, some key vocabulary uh, like dictator, democracy, rentier state, which uh, this was a term I learned uh, after seeing what, what came in from the, the teacher who created this um, and on down the line. So this one's uh, great. Here's uh, show you quick the uh, AP government FR, AP comp gov FRQs. So this one is the conceptual analysis. Um, and focuses on this idea of regime change and different ways that regime change can occur. This one is the comparative analysis. So looks at this idea of a rentier state um, and then asks for students to make comparisons between two of uh, the course countries in AP comparative government. And then the last resource that, that goes with this one, um, this is our, our US history focused one. Um, so almost all the time with a retro report lesson, you're going to find a handful of uh, of questions that go with the film um, and then bringing in some some other resources as well. So here we have a, a primary source analysis activity um, that has us look at uh, one of these declassified CIA documents um, and then looks at a U.S. timeline or a timeline between the U.S. and Iran. And this one actually uh, is from our friends at the, the Council on Foreign Relations. Um, one of the things I like best about this and about working with the folks at, at CFR is um, I'm pretty confident that as, as new things happen, this timeline will get updated. And it's very likely to remain here over time. Um, and one of the ways I know that, apologize if I'm making you ill here, uh, is that the most recent thing on the timeline was from September 8th, uh, so less than a month ago, This uh, that prisoner exchange deal. Um, so here, uh, you know, the I'm confident in, in the folks at CFR in creating great materials for us. All right, move on here. Um, another thing I'll, I'll tell you about this is this film, this Iran film, is now part of our, our global Cold War collection. Uh, we actually have a ton of films that look at uh, at the Cold War from a number of different angles, uh, whether it's the Cuban Missile Crisis or the Space Race or the Berlin Airlift or the Korean War. We have stuff on McCarthyism, on uh, nuclear testing, all sorts of different things. So uh, hopefully, you know, if the Cold War comes up in your U.S. history or world history courses, um, I, I think we have some great resources that you can put to use. Um, and then the last uh, clip I'll show you here is this is another brand new film. Uh, this one's only a couple weeks old. Uh, we partnered with Scientific American on this one. Uh, and this one looks at, uh, at the problem with the hole in the ozone layer. Um, I know it's some of you looking at the, at the room, some of you like me are, are children of the 80s and 90s. Uh, and we were beaten over the head with, uh, with the fact that there was a hole in the ozone layer and this was going to be uh, a tremendous problem that we would have to deal with. Um, this is also one of those times where we, we arguably have an environmental success story. Uh, we've now made changes uh, and engaged in diplomacy uh, to bring about uh, at least some healing and some some steps towards fixing the hole in the ozone layer. So we'll watch just a, a short clip on this one as well. Today, scientists who recently returned from the Antarctic told Congress that the ozone layer still is disappearing at an alarming rate. The sledgehammer that actually dealt that blow had to be the chlorofluorocarbons because the chlorine in our atmosphere in general is something like 80% man-made. By the mid-1980s, the U.S. had a partial ban on CFCs and aerosols, 
and calls for more bans and international action were growing during President Reagan's administration. It was the Secretary of the Interior, Don Hodel, um, who I think as a result of pressures from some countries that did not want to move forward with a treaty on ozone depletion, we were actually asked to develop a cost analysis for everyone to wear hats and sunglasses when they went outside, rather than stop producing the chemicals that destroyed the ozone layer. We had to actually look at the number of people in the United States, multiply it by 237 million uh, to come up with a cost estimate. All right, so one of those uh, crazy nuggets from history. Uh, I can't imagine you you go to go to work uh, for you know a bureaucratic agency and uh, and be told, hey, run a cost estimate on how much it would it would be to get everyone hats, sunglasses, and sunscreen uh, across the the entire country. Um, so the the thing I love about this film, beyond it just being a really interesting and engaging story, um, is I uh, it I think it's it's useful in a number of different areas. So here, uh, what we created and actually just released today um, is a cabinet simulation that goes with this. So um, what we see in the film uh, is uh, the development of the Montreal Protocol, this United Nations agreement uh, to take this ban on certain CFCs worldwide. Um, and again, arguably this fantastic success story uh, in uh, environmental regulation and policy. Um, and so what we have here is uh, in this simulation is actually the, the United Nations right now is working on uh, a potential global treaty when it comes to plastic pollution. Um, so here it has students sort of look at, at this film as a model. Um, and then uh, engage in that sort of simulation themselves. So uh, becoming members of the cabinet and advising the president on uh, what action should be taken. Uh, you know, should we lump ourselves in with the United Nations? What should we suggest as part of this treaty? What action should we take on our own? Uh, sort of all encompassing. And I'll show you real quick here. Um, so yeah, this is the, uh, this is the, video page for this one. And not only do we have, I gotta refresh, not only do we have a science-based lesson for this one, uh, but like I said, we have our, our cabinet simulation as well. So sort of ground students in looking at this problem through the film, um, and then ask students to uh, examine what's currently out there from the United Nations. And then uh, we created a cabinet simulation uh, information sheet where uh, goes through all of the different roles that students could play um, and then provide some some great resources for them as a starting point to learn about this problem with their teams to develop what they think ought to be uh, the recommendation. So that's what we have there. At this point, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to turn it over to Casey, uh, who's going to tell you about some amazing resources from uh, CFR education. So Casey, take it away. Yeah, thanks so much, Dave. Um... Again, like I referred to earlier, we were very excited about this partnership with Retro Report. Um, as you saw, their, their great video on Operation Ajax um, was a great fit for our materials. Um, we felt that a lot of teachers, you probably stitch different things together. So you've got a great film from Retro Report, and hopefully you uh, might have an interest in combining some of our uh, lesson plans around the tools of foreign policy. Um, as the video illustrates, the U.S. has employed various tools of foreign policy, especially since the 1950s, um, against Iran, um, whether it be covert action with the CIA, economic sanctions, soft power, um, and uh, just a lot of different examples of tools being used. Um, U.S. has certainly played a significant role in shaping that modern history in Iran, um, whether it be encouraging the overthrow of Mossadegh to the support of the Shah, so our hope is that teachers looking to, to kind of mix and match different resources will find um, Retro Reports uh, video with some of our uh, World 101 and Model Diplomacy materials, a good way to kind of build a, a small lesson or a small unit around some of those concepts. Um, over the past year, I'm going to share my screen right now. Over the past year, um, we have really worked hard to kind of build out um, a complete set of 
Sorry. Iran is one of the old. We've worked hard to kind of build out a, a set of um, uh, teaching resources. So what I have on the screen right here, and I'm going to go to the website to kind of give an organic search, is that every um, World 101 uh, learning resource page is going to have teaching resources and a higher ed discussion guide at the bottom. So those lesson plans will include slides, discussion guides. Um, and we also have a higher ed set of discussion guides, which go a little bit more into, into detail. Uh, I'm going to take us to World 101 right now, so you can kind of see that in action. So this is our World 101 page for foreign policy, and in particular, we're looking at tools of foreign policy. We also have a U.S. foreign policy section as well, if you want to be a little bit more U.S.-centric for, let's say, U.S. history or, or some other class that might align with. But these right here are kind of the broad tools of foreign policy that any country can use. So this might be a match with a world history class, uh, an elective you might be teaching. But as you can see, we have 11 different foreign policy tools that each form our different learning resource. And on each page, we'll have um, a corresponding lesson plan and discussion guide. So the hope is that those are pretty easy to find as you click through. Um, but again, they should be, you know, right near the top. You're going to have your content um, nicely organized with some great graphics. And we also have a number of short form videos that I'll show you in just a moment. So the hope is um, it's well organized. You can easily find it as, as you kind of go through. Um, our lesson plans. Uh, sorry. Our lesson plans are structured um, in Google Docs, much like Dave mentioned, we want teachers to be able to edit these. And we know, depending on your class size, depending on how long your periods are, it's essential that you can edit these into different components. So this is kind of our recommended flow on our recommended timeline, but you can easily make a copy of this to kind of tailor things to your needs. All the materials are at the top. Um, we also have our other um, resources that uh, we link to. So I'm going to jump over the live document. And we have a guided reading handout, which I'll open quickly. Again, just questions related to the various readings, which could be good for scaffolding, could be good for independent work or a homework assignment. And the links um, are at the top of each page. So you can break this apart pretty easily based on your needs. Um, our presentation uh, is basically just the visuals. So depending on the unit, there could be a whole bunch of different visuals. We have videos embedded as well because we assume a lot of you um, will probably be projecting on some type of screen if you're teaching in front of the class. But again, uh, a wide variety of visuals that can all be found in one place um, in that presentation. Uh, our discussion guide for high school, um, again, it shares the resources and um, we have a handful of questions. It could be anywhere from six to 15, depending on how long the unit is, but we do embed some there. We recommend some other activities and also connections to other modules, as well as a, a full list of lesson plans that I'll uh, share with you in a follow-up email. Um, again, hopefully this looks pretty familiar in terms of the structure, it's something you can apply, but typically we have some type of prep work in the forms of homework. We have recommendations for one to two class periods. Typically, a lot of times it's just one class period, but in this case, two class periods with some homework. So a little bit unique. So I know some teachers won't have homework time, but in a lot of cases, that homework that we recommend can easily be applied to a class period, depending on what your structure is. Um, this case, there's a lot of resources who are jigsawing into economic, military, and other tools just to, to make that more manageable in class. We know it's a lot of different links to click through. And um, we do wind up leveraging model diplomacy, uh, which can be either a homework uh, written response or it can also be done as a discussion in class. And I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, we have our Again, full list of lesson plans at the bottom of every lesson. So in case you want to jump to a different unit, different topic, you can just find that on every single document we create. So these are all the lesson plans we've created. We do have some primary source lessons with Gilder, but hopefully um, that will be useful and helpful. And then we have some alignment in the lesson plan to, to educating for American democracy and to the C3 framework. 
Um, without going into the entire lesson plan line by line, I do want to show you um, one of our short form videos. So we typically kick off a unit with some type of an introductory video that um, I find to be very well produced. Um, they fall in the range of four to seven minutes. In this case, it's four and a half. Um, I'm going to play this video clip for you, which kicks off our tools of foreign policy unit. And this was um, something that we're asking the students to kind of view, but I'll take us right to the landing page. I'll play the video and then I'll be back in four and a half minutes. Foreign policy is how countries try to influence each other in order to advance their own interests. And there are many tools they can use in pursuit of this aim. Those tools generally fall into three broad categories, political, economic, and military. The primary political tool is diplomacy, all the ways in which one country communicates with other countries, both at high-level meetings between leaders and regular interactions between country representatives sent abroad as diplomats and ambassadors. Their interactions can be in public or in private and can include both friendly consultations as well as heated negotiations. Direct diplomacy between countries allows for clear communication of goals and priorities, negotiated agreements that address problems, and coordinated action. In the economic category of tools, Loans, aid, and other forms of economic statecraft can generate goodwill, help stabilize a country, and increase its capacity to govern. Countries that are given money and resources are often more open to their benefactor's influence. Trade policies are also used to influence other countries' behavior by offering access to domestic markets and foreign investment as an incentive for other countries to act in favorable ways. On the flip side, economic sanctions actively restrict other countries' ability to trade and grow economically and can punish them for acting in undesirable ways, potentially convincing them to change their behavior. The most powerful tools tend to be in the military category. At times, when its use of other tools has failed or when it feels directly threatened, one country will use armed force against another until it changes its behavior, whether through limited airstrikes or a full-scale invasion. Armed force can lead to war between two countries, which often results in damage for both sides, with no clear-cut winners or losers. But military action between countries is often prevented through the tool of deterrence. That is convincing other countries that if they were to attack, the targeted country's military and the militaries of its foreign partners would be strong enough to cause serious damage to the attacking country, thus discouraging or deterring it from attacking in the first place. Another way to lower temperatures is through arms control agreements, which can increase transparency and limit the development, deployment, number, and use of the world's most dangerous weapons, decreasing the likelihood and potential costs of any conflict. Sometimes military action isn't about forcing another country to do something, but rather helping it. For example, if two countries are fighting or one is going through a civil war, other countries can assist in peacekeeping, sending in their military to try to stop the fighting and restore stability. That said, some foreign policy tools, like intelligence, fall into multiple categories. Intelligence involves gathering information about another country. If leaders have insights into what is going on in other countries, about what their leaders or citizens are thinking or doing, they can use other foreign policy tools more strategically, and they can share that intelligence with friendly countries. Intelligence also includes covert actions, working to influence political, economic, and military conditions abroad without other countries knowing about their efforts. Another tool that touches multiple categories is nation building. This happens when countries attempt to build functioning political, economic, and security institutions in other countries. This tool often involves the use of several tools, military training, intelligence, humanitarian assistance, trade, and diplomacy. Similarly, soft power is a tool that doesn't fit neatly into one category. It's when a country gets other countries to adopt the same goals as their own by demonstrating that its domestic and foreign policies are successful and worth following. This is often achieved by promoting its cultural and political values abroad. There are many foreign policy tools, and each tool can be wielded in various ways. It's up to policymakers to figure out the best combination of tools to use and determine when to use them in order to influence other countries in ways that advance their own country's interests. All right, so, and again, we, we do typically have, there's usually some video that kind of anchors um, each unit. Oftentimes it kicks it off, but 
we've got a, a wide variety. They're they're very um, quick hit. They're well produced. Um, and in particular, we've got a great one called the Globe Trotting Journey of a Sneaker that shows how through trade and globalization, a sneaker gets produced across the world. Um, we've got a great one about um, how globalization kind of led to the rise of, of avocados being a staple around the world. So a lot of really well done videos. Um, so hopefully you find those useful. We do have a YouTube page as well where you can find these videos by themselves. Um, what I will mention before I move to the model diplomacy piece, though, is yes, we are a foreign policy think tank. We do a lot of you know foreign policy resources, but I'm going to jump to the lesson plans just to kind of underscore that we we very well. There's many opportunities where you fit into um, other courses, uh, U.S. history, economics. So if you, if you look through here. Um, we've got a forms of government uh, units that's got some great resources. We do have kind of a, our contemporary history is a provides some great background information to get us from um, anywhere from before the world wars to present day. Um, stuff on migration and climate change, which we're really building out, um, trade, econ, so whole whole bunch of stuff that can be relevant in many different classes. So hopefully you'll find that uh, useful. Um, as I mentioned, uh, our Tools of Foreign Policy unit on World 101 does link up um, with uh, model diplomacy quite well. And for those that are unfamiliar with model diplomacy, that is our series that we have of um, hypothetical and historical scenarios where students are placed in the role of uh, either the U.S. National Security Council or the U.N. Security Council as they work through some cases. So the one that we used in this homework was one of our pop-up cases, which is meant to be a little bit quicker hit. It's a, it's a one-pager that sets up a situation that, while it's a hypothetical conflict, it's rooted in, in current events, things that are really going on. In our case, we looked at the um, cross-strait relations between China and Taiwan, and uh, this case right here kind of structures out a potential debate or discussion. Um, if you go to our website, again, everything's free and accessible. The pop-up cases will take you right to the text where there's the overview of what the issue is. Situation provides the, the history and, and some added context. And then what the U.S. Security Council, the National Security Council has to make the decision. So we typically provide three to four different options. So in this case of China and Taiwan um, reaching conflict, the US could do nothing. So students can consider that option for debate. We can impose sanctions and uh, on China to get them to back off, or we could position the US military to defend Taiwan. So in this case, while students could also create, craft some of their own, we tend to pin or encourage pinning our discussion around these options so students can kind of weigh the pros and cons in a deliberative type form. Um, again, additional resources. And um, we also have the PDF version um, linked in as well. So hopefully this can be a helpful way to address either in a discussion or, or a reflection where students read this one pager and then respond. While we're on this page, there's plenty to look at. But the only other thing I'll mention too is a lot of these are hypothetical current events based cases. We try to be relevant. Earlier this summer, we released Should the United States Ban TikTok to Preserve National Security? So that's a great one that's relevant and timely. Um, we do also have different series. So we have one on the war in Ukraine, which could provide some good context. And in particular, too, because I'm assuming a lot of you are teaching history, we have a U.S. history series. So we have the Tools of Foreign Policy, but we also have a U.S. history series that it gives us a historical look. So this takes us anywhere from um, the lead up to the War of 1812 to westward expansion to World War I to the Spanish-American War. So a lot of historical cases. So there's there's a, there's something for everybody on here and something for every class. So again, I, I hope you'll take a, a moment to check out model diplomacy in addition to um, World War I. Um, last but not least, um, Again, we know that time can be an issue for a lot of teachers, so we, we, we're providing 
World 101 as one potential resource or supplement to Retro Report's great film. Model Diplomacy, which could be used in conjunction or on its own, plenty of resources. Um, uh, and again, if you're just trying to teach the kids about the tools of foreign policy, we do have our series of uh, tools of foreign policy on the Model Diplomacy website as well. So I've got those listed. Um, and, and last but not least, depending on how much time you have or how, how much you want to extend this, we have a third product called Convene the Council, which we created with iCivics. Um, it's created as a free online game where students can work their way through. I'm going to play the trailer. And again, this is a great way to either extend if you've got the time, or this could be done as a standalone just to teach about some of the foreign policy issues uh, in a game-like format. This takes about 30 minutes to play. So again, it's manageable for classwork or homework, but I'll play the trailer and hopefully that gives some context. There's a new team in the White House. We can't wait to see how the new administration navigates challenges on the world stage. You will have some tough choices to make, but the people in this room will give you the information you need. A conflict in Pineland has escalated, resulting in hundreds of thousands of people fleeing to other countries to escape the violence. We should not ignore this crisis. We have the ability to help people in We already admit a certain number of refugees each year, but in times of need, the administration can raise that We'd number. likely face some domestic criticism if we're seen as spending so much money on others when unemployment, poverty, and inequality are so high here at people home. People might even criticize us for trying to pay other countries to keep people out of our Doing own. nothing is also an option here. A lot of refugees may want to stay close and not travel to the U.S. Thanks to the administration's hard work, thousands of refugees have been allowed to enter the country. Safe from violence, they're able to seek new opportunities in the U.S. And while Casey is unmuting himself, I will say... There you we go. May, <laughs> yeah, you may have heard a familiar voice... Uh, I actually did the uh, voiceover for that game. So, yes, I I was the newscaster who comes in between uh, all the turns of that game. <laughs> great. And I apologize about the, the being muted. But in addition to the game being great as a standalone, there are um, uh, teaching resources online. So you can kind of pre-teach some of the concepts before students play the game. And there's also some resources for um, them processing what they've learned after. So again, multiple ways to teach about foreign policy. Those are our, our three products in a nutshell. And I, I hope that was kind of a very quick introduction to, to what exists. Um, let's see, last but not least, a reminder, we do have our three different websites, World 101, Model Diplomacy, and Convene the Council, which lives on iCivic, but also in various app stores. Um, we do have two email addresses for support on our products directly. So typically it's going to be one of us responding directly to you, but it just gives you the inroads to, to quickly get some help or recommendations. We have a great newsletter, which uh, uh, links with current events. Um, and we also have a uh, Facebook presence and a Twitter or uh, presence on X as well. So Hopefully that was helpful, but we we hope to support you all. We hope to continue refining our, our products and improving them and adding new resources. We got climate change coming down the road in the near future. So thank you all again so much. And I think we're going to uh, head back to, to Dave for the end section of this. Yeah, we're going to transition here uh, with some time for Q&A. And I saw a great question in the chat, although it looks like uh, Rania, a member of your, of your team, answered. So Maria asked if... Uh, the model diplomacy simulations were good for model UN clubs, and it looks like they're perfect. Anything else you want to add to that, uh, Casey or Rania? Yeah, so, um, and again, there's a lot to unpack on model diplomacy, but those those uh, pop-up cases, one-pagers, they can be done in a number of different ways. If you look at the full cases, there's a, a lot of additional resources, including um, recommendations on creating a memorandum. We have rubrics on there. So it does, it's critical thinking, it's reading, it's writing, it's speaking. 
Um, lots of resources on there to kind of dig through. And uh, the full cases do currently require a login, but it's free to create. So um, again, lots of great options to kind of dig in and hit multiple skills. Excellent. I'm going to pause the recording. There we go. Uh, again, I wanted to, to thank all of you for joining us this evening. Uh, just a little bit on the follow-up of what you can expect from us here. So number one, um, you can get this the whole presentation that has embedded links in it. If you want to grab that now, wonderful. It's the shortened URL bit.ly slash diplomacy web. Uh, the D and the W are capitalized. And then what you should expect from me, uh, hopefully yet this evening, uh, is uh, an email with all of the links to all of the things that we shared, um, including one of the things that uh, is very important for folks like Retro Report for uh, CFR education is your feedback. Um, so we have a very short, we even timed it out for you. It's a two minute survey uh, where we'd love to know did you find this evening useful? What resources do you think might find a home in your classroom? What other things should we be creating? Uh, that type of feedback from you, we we would love. So, you know, uh, Isadora just uh, shared it there in the chat. So if you can click on that, I will also share it with you via email. Um, and then that's also where you can request a certificate of attendance for this evening. So uh, if you're someone who keeps track of, you know, professional development hours outside of school, uh, we'll happily provide a, a certificate saying that you participated with us uh, this evening. Um, and then very last, uh, as we as we say goodbye this evening, um, you know, you can find my my info here on the screen. Uh, you can email me. You can find me on Twitter or X. Uh, and then the best way to stay in touch, that QR code, and uh, I think Isadora will share our the link for the Retro Report newsletter uh, in the chat as well. My promise to you is I, I only send you one email a week uh, that, that tells you what's new from us, what films, resources, uh, classroom activities, uh, professional development, that sort of thing. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, have a wonderful Tuesday. Thanks for taking an hour out of your day.